it's not for the interests of the United States, but it's for the interests of Uzbekistan itself uh, that, that these advances are, are important. And in the economic sphere as well, that uh, there would be uh, a way that uh, Uzbekistan can increase its attractiveness to foreign investment, including American investment, transparency in laws, uh, dealing with corruption issues. I mean, these are always issues that we have to deal with. I mean, there are issues in our own country we deal with. But with Uzbekistan, I think we look for a constructive approach. You have been pushing for regional integrity <coughs> in Central Asia. And uh, there are questions in the region that say, well, you know, what do we get from this? What does each country get from this concept of regional integrity or from this concept of uh, greater Central Asia? Is it, do you have a clear vision on that? Well, we're not talking, at least in the United States and the State Department, of a greater Central Asia. I mean, we encourage cooperation among the countries of Central Asia, but not just as Central Asia, but uh, also with uh, their neighbors like Afghanistan, uh, a as well as looking at all the regional uh, the uh, connections that can be made of building transportation routes that would go from Kazakhstan all the way down through Afghanistan to Pakistan and India, uh, trade routes, energy corridors, uh, the uh, provision and transmission of electricity uh, from central uh, countries in Central Asia to the economies of South Asia. Uh, this is one of the reasons why uh, the countries of Central Asia were put into, in the State Department, uh, uh, Bureau of South and Central Asian Affairs to look at these uh, various opportunities and advantages of developing uh, trade, transport, and political, cultural uh, connections uh, that are north to south as well as to complement the relationships that each of these countries have with their traditional neighbors like Russia and China and uh, uh, across the Caspian Sea and, uh, and the like. Yeah, I so I don't view them as isolating Central Asia you know, uh, in and of itself, but to uh, expand their, uh, their, their connections and their possibilities in a broader area. Well, Turkey seems to be um, to be trying to renew its policies towards Central Asia. How do you see their influence? Well, I think there's always been, a, a, certainly a, since the, these uh, republics became independent when the Soviet Union uh, collapsed, that there were very the, the Turkish traditions, language uh, connections, uh, and the like. Uh, uh, between Turkey and the peoples of this area that Turkey has uh, uh, wishes to revive and to and to uh, develop uh, in cooperation in economic and cultural and, and politically. And since Turkey is uh, a direct neighbor in many respects and is also a, a market for, for instance, the energy from Central Asia as well as the uh, goods as well as a, a producer of goods for Central Asia, it seems to be quite natural that uh, Turkey is, uh, is, is both a customer uh, as well as a, a producer, as well as a transit and a bridge uh, for Central Asia to world markets beyond, such as in uh, the more western parts of Europe as well as uh, even, even to the south. So I think that uh, you know, this is a, uh, is, a, is a good thing. I think uh, you know, much is talked about the great game in, uh, in Central Asia as if this is some kind of contest between the United States or Russia or, or major powers. And I think certainly from the perspective of the Central Asians, there is no need for a great game. It's sort of great opportunities that we're talking about. So are you about. saying that the United States is not playing any kind of a game in the region? No, the United States isn't playing. I know that this is often uh, used in, in media, uh, sometimes in the region elsewhere, to say the United States is trying to supplant Russia, for instance, which had... Or China. Or, or China. Uh, and it's nothing of the sort. I think the, you know, what the United States wishes to see is uh, each of these uh, countries sort of branching out and, and, and developing their relationships with uh, many countries and not to the disadvantage of another country. So it's not to sort of surplant Russia. I mean, Russia and China certainly have interests, they have needs, they have uh, connections, cultural, political, economic, that are quite understandable in this area. And so does Turkey, the United States, uh, and, other, uh, and other countries, the European Union, the various European countries, that should all, and, and that the countries of, of Central Asia are the ones that should be able to decide the kind of relationships that they wish to develop and not feel that they are under any pressure to be dominated by any one country. I think this one message is what I hear very clearly when I meet with 
uh, the leaders and the peoples in these areas in Central Asia, is they don't want to be dominated by anyone. Not the United States, not Russia, not China, not Turkey. They want to develop uh, themselves as independent uh, actors that have partners and see partners on an equal basis, if you were, with all of the countries that, are, uh, that, uh, that they wish to have a relationship with, like the United States, Russia, China, and Turkey. Well, 